It's the BBP TV show since 2012, where amazing guests share their digital adventures. Who will we meet today? Small biz influencer? Up and coming trendsetter? Accomplished author? You never know who'll be dropping by. And now, here's your host, Elaine Lindsay, the bionic glamourpreneur with Truel Social Media, who's the second most curious person on the planet. Yeah, this is a new platform for me. So there we go. Yeah. Hello, hello. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm really thrilled to be able to uh, reintroduce a past guest that I have a very high regard for. And once again, we have Ted Rubin. So good to have you here, Ted. Very I'm excited. So happy, about... so happy to be here. Thank you. Good, good. I'm really excited. And I'm not going to take forever to try and go through some of Ted's accolades because we'd be here till Sunday. So we're just going to sort of skip that. Um, he is the CMO and advisor for Photify. He, he is the MC and host for Brand Innovator Summits. And I believe you've been doing that for a very long time. Well, the truth of the matter is I stopped doing it this summer. You so I, I did, but it was, it was six years and yeah. it, it, it ended the end of this summer and it was just, you know, it kind of had its play, but I still fortunately have a great relationship with those guys and see them periodically. Oh, that's actually, cause that's quite a run. Um, you're, you're a speaker, an author, a provocateur, which is absolutely true. And you're also an incredible dad who really believes in his children and adores his daughters. I know because I ask every time I talk to you. I wanted to talk to Ted and have him back on the show because for many, many years, Ted has been all about what he calls R on R. It's a hashtag and it means return on relationships. And the fact is, okay, without relationships, I don't believe we have anything. And Ted really embodies the whole concept of return on relationships. Hey, he's here again. Quickly, I want to say he's already a three-time author, best-selling books, Return on Relationship, How to Look People in the Eye Digitally, The Age of Influence, Selling to the Digitally Connected Customer. And I'm very excited for the new one, which is Retail Relevancy. And I believe it's, uh, John. correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, your partner is John Andrews. My business partner and, and buddy is John Andrews. And this is really, I am going to take second billing on this book. Um, okay. Because, of course, we're building in a lot of what I talk about and the way I believe in engagement and connection. But he is the retail thought leader. Okay. Or, okay. or what we call the retail geek. John's the guy that goes shopping sometimes just because he wants to experience the shopping experience, whether it's online or in a store. Okay. He, goes, he goes to Black Friday with his daughter, really not with any intention of buying anything, just to see what's happening. Oh, so that's wow. wow. And and that's something I want us to touch on because retail isn't all you do. You have this vastly um full digital life that you deal with social media and you deal with everything that we have digitally, which isn't often in my world with entrepreneurs, isn't necessarily all about retail per se. And um, when I when I looked up a number of uh, your pithy and very useful comments. One thing really stuck in my mind, and I think it crosses the barrier, retail, entrepreneur, whoever you are, whatever you do, your brand or business is what you do. Your reputation is what people remember and share. Now that's that's a Tedism, if ever there was one. Yes, it is. I'm gonna stop talking and I'd love for you to just maybe Give people an idea of why the relationship is so important. Well, cause, uh, look, first of all, thank you very much. And I appreciate all the good news. Um, by the way, folks, I'm wearing this because my younger daughter is in her first year at Harvard Law School. Um, so, you know, again, uh, I, I know Elaine mentioned um, things with my daughters and how important they are to me. And, and we've discussed in the past some of the challenges I have due to being a divorced dad. Um, but just, you know, this is this is not about me. I'm not bragging about myself. I'm just totally bragging about my daughter. Um, uh, you know, 
when you talk about what you just brought up and how important relationships are, what I think is it's the bridge between your brand and, and, and your, and, and um, how people talk about you and what, and what your, you know, what your um, uh, relationship is with people. You know, um, uh, I say, like you said, a brand is what you do. A relationship, I mean, uh, uh, um, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm zoning <laughs> But um, but if you could if you could just repeat that for me, you say uh, a brand of brand a, business a is reputation. What you oh my God, the word reputation just fell out of my head. But <laughs> I believe that the relationship is is the is the bridge between your brand and and your reputation. And for instance, when I think of you, Elaine, I, I often have to go and check because I think of you as Elaine Troll. Just because yeah. because you were you were branded the true social media so well that to me you and and that brand are one and the same. So Lindsay is just is just not something that comes to my mind. Um, I think of that, and to me that's a big part of what reputation is because you know you, you, and and then you your reputation which is really what's important more than your brand. Your brand might be true, but your reputation is how you care about people, how you connect and engage with people, how you remember things. When I brought up about, I was really surprised that when I brought up that the last time we did one of these, which was four years ago, just like uh, this Saturday, I'm going to visit my daughter for dinner. And by the way, I don't get to see them that often. My daughter, I get, last time I saw her was in September. So it's not like, oh, well, you're seeing your daughter every week. The last time we did one of these, I was also going to see my daughter. And it was her freshman year at University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. So, and when I mentioned that, instead of you going, oh, really? Like you remembered it perfectly. And to me, that's really what your reputation is. Your brand is, 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 is true is social media is the different places that you make your imprint and that you post your content and where you engage. But to me, your reputation is the way you, you, you treat that engagement of how important it is to you and how important the person is to you. And by the way, so your audience understands that can be as much as maybe you didn't remember, but you did what I did before we got on the phone. You reviewed our past relationship. You went and looked at, now maybe you didn't, but you know, like I remembered because I went before I do something, whether it's to be on a show like this or really almost any call, a friend calls me up and says, Hey man, like we both been so busy. Do you have time Friday to catch up? And I go, sure. I go to his Facebook page. I go to his LinkedIn page. If it's someone that I'm not watching every day and I look to see what's going on. And I do that for two reasons. I do it the same way. And I'll tell you a story about what my dad taught me so I can bring up relevant things that might be important to them. And I also do it so I don't stick my foot in my mouth where, you know, Hey man, you look great. Everything must be terrific. Oh my, my God, it's something my dad passed away or, or, you know, wow, how's it going at, 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 at General Electric? Oh man, I left there a year and a half ago, you know, and, and what that tells somebody is that you're not paying attention, especially in this day and age, you know, obviously there was a time where it was very difficult to be updated on those kind of things. Now to me, there's no excuse. So the story that I was going to share was that when I graduated college, it was 1980 and my first job was um, a sales job. And, and my dad knew that part of my job was to get appointments. I was in the investment business. I had to get in front of people. And my dad was always in the sales kind of business development space. And he calls me at the end of my first week and he's like, so do you have your first appointment? How, you know, how you doing? And I said, yeah. He goes, when is it? I said, next Thursday. He says, what time? I said, 10 o'clock. He goes, what time are you going to get there? I said, I don't know, five to 10, you know, don't worry, dad. I won't be late. He goes, no, get there at nine o'clock in the morning walk around the neighborhood. Remember, this was 1980. There was no LinkedIn. There was no Facebook. There, there was no Google Maps. You know, walk around the neighborhood, see what restaurants are there, what stores are there, like things that you, the person you're meeting with might be engaging when they're outside their office. Go into the building, look at the board in there and see who's there. Find out what other companies are in the building. Make sure to get into his or her office at least half an hour early and see if there's any way for the person who is either their assistant or the receptionist can get you into their office before the meeting. Why? So you can look at what photos are on the wall, what diplomas are hanging. Find points of emotional connection. Is he, a, is, she, is he or she a father, grandfather, grandmother? Do they play golf? Do they play tennis? Do they travel? Something so that you're not going in there and just talking straight business. You're showing them 
that you that you have a concern for getting to know who they are and you can tap onto topics that will get them excited at, to talk to you rather than sitting there with their guard up the way they people tend to do when they know you're coming there to sell them something and and today uh, that's so easy to do, but for few, so few people do. So that, you know, that was a bit of a relationship tangent, you know, off of what we were talking about. But to me, like people will say to me sometimes, well, you know, in this day and age, if you bring up things that are so obviously in their profiles, it's clear that you didn't really know about them. You re I said, yeah, but everyone's going to appreciate you doing your research. You know, look, when I meet somebody, anybody, I have, I, when I put them into my contact file, I put down where I met them, when I met them, I, if, if I had a chance to write down some notes on, and that's why I think business cards are so important. Every once in a while, I'll write a few things like we spoke about golf, we talked about the weather, whatever. Or if later I remember a particular, like obviously if I meet 300 people, I'm not going to remember them all. But anything I remember, I mean, I write down. And then the first time we communicate, whether in any kind of fashion, more than just connecting and clicking a button. But if they write me a note, if they write me an email, I cut and paste that email into the context file under the notes. So I have context. And then when I'm at an event or you, and even face to face, like if I see someone, I go, oh my God, that's Elaine Lindsay. And I'll go to my thing and I'll look up to see when we first met or some kind of tidbit I can pull out. And, and, then, and so even if they're watching me, so one of two things happens. Either they don't notice you look it up and they go, oh my, and they think, oh my God, like they, he remembers me or she remembers me. How great is that? Or someone says, well, what if they see you do it? I go, then they say, oh my God, you took the time to record that and then to review it again before you talk to me. You win no matter what, when you show someone that you took the time to be interested. Oh, see, that that's it's all such great information. And I, I just have to say, I'm the second most curious person on the planet. It never came to me as a business tactic. No one, no one taught me. I'm just curious. I want to know. And way back when, even before I had you on the show, whenever I heard you talk, whenever I saw anything about you, the one thing that was always there was your deep love of your girls and your commitment to staying in their lives. And, and that for me uh, made it all the more important for me to be able to talk to you because that kind of, of depth, I think, translates into people's business lives as well. Well, it's why I say that people want to know who you are as a person. It's why I push back when people say, why did you post that post about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and your daughter on LinkedIn? Well, because I know that number one, there's a lot of people on LinkedIn that, that either are not connected to me on Facebook or don't follow me actively and I don't come up in their feed. And they, they do want to know those kind of things because people want to know things about people, whether it's because they like you or they care about you, or even if it's just because you're someone they do business with, it's valuable. And then when you get to the things like whether it's my daughters or, you know, it can be a love of sports, people, you know, when you learn about people's passions, it, it opens them up, it makes them more human, and it makes them connect better because when you show an interest in something there that they have a passion in, and I don't mean faking, I don't mean saying, oh my God, I love football too, but that doesn't mean you can't say, hey, I noticed you're a big Giants fan and they won this week and that's great. And then if the person says, oh, you know, you're a big football fan? No, not really. But, you know, but I do know that you are and I appreciate that. And, you know, and I think we all, like, I know that when someone says something to me about something that they may not necessarily be passionate about, but they, but they took the time to care or to mention something they know I am, it, it makes all the difference. It makes you, without even recognizing it, it opens up your welcoming um, 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 uh, references or the way you work or the way you listen to somebody. And, and I just think to me, like you said earlier about you never thought about it in a business context, but it's about, it's really, it's a relationship contest co context and relationships. Just like I say, return on relationship. People used to say, well, are you saying ROI isn't important? And I, and I say, no, mm -hmm. ROI is the, I believe ROI is the most important thing in business and in personal. Mm 
because in personal we have an ROI. It's the it's it's the return on investment on time you give to something. Do you do you work it at your synagogue or at your church? Do you do you put in time with charities? Do you go play sports? Like where do you get you? And we all make those decisions every day. Like you know what? I'd love to go play golf, but it's really important I spend today with my family. That's a return on time investment. That's a return on on emotional investment. And all those things are important. What I say is return on relationship enhances all of those things. Whether it's your emotional connection, your your or your family, whatever it is, when you build those relationships or you work at them. And look, we all like, uh, you know, we all go through, I have friends right now whose, whose children, especially daughters are in their teen years and, and it's stressful, you know, oh, like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> some of my friends are like, dude, I can't travel right now because my daughter and my wife are like, you know, but you put in that time because it's important because even that that's part of growing up. That's part of relationship building. And just like anything else, when people say they don't want you around, they do. They might not want you telling them what to do, but there will be a time where they'll remember it. Look, it's something that it better happen because look, you know, I have all this stress and this difficulty with my children because my ex has alienated them. It continues to do so even at the age of 23 and 25. But I know that in their minds, they know I don't stop calling. I don't stop coming. Even my older daughter who hasn't responded to a communication from me in close to two years, every week or so, or every other week, I send a text, I send an email, I send something just to say, I love you. I'm here if you need me. And, and they are, and I know they just like, look, I have people that I don't, that I've had falling outs with, but I still appreciate when they're checking up on me. Yeah. I still see them like something or look at my post or something. And I go, okay, you know, now might not be the time, but well, it's, it's nice to know they're still making sure I'm okay. Yeah. And, and I think, I think you, you can't have an ROI without the relationship. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I think, you, you know, you can, you know, in, in, there is certainly ROI in business where the relationship doesn't necessarily come into play. There are certain things where there, there's no choice. It's a better price. They do things, but yeah. I, but right. even in those instances, it will enhance it. Yes. It will yes. make it longer lasting and it will make it to that point where somebody else can either meet or beat a price and, and, and the relate because you had worked on the relationship, not just the price over all those years when someone was with you, they're going to say, you know what, right now, that's not as important to me. It might've been when I first signed on in this thing, it's always going to have value. 100%. It's always going to add value. Yeah. And, and that's really what I meant because that even if, if it's one-sided, you know, when, when you're reaching out all the time, that that is being banked emotionally, spiritually, whether they do anything about it or not. It's important for both of you to know that that, that bond is there no matter what. And, and I think in business, there, there has to be sort of, I guess, the feeling of wanting to build a relationship no matter if it's you know when people buy on price or 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 buy for some other reason that that basis of you trying to build a relationship can be the difference that tips the boat right and what people have to recognize relationship doesn't isn't especially with businesses isn't just about what we're doing here relationship is delivering on time relationship is making my life easier my business partner and I like to say that simplicity is the new EDLP. EDLP is everyday low pricing. Walmart made it famous. No sales, just great prices all the time. But we believe simplicity is the, is the new important factor because people, but, but simplicity isn't just about, I can buy quickly. Simplicity is about the whole process. It's simplicity of being able to return things, being able to communicate with something, being able to get an answer. And it wins out over things. I mean, like I buy things through Amazon versus direct or from other brands because I know that they make my life simple. And do, do, whether they care about me as a human or they care about me as a customer, they, they value every customer because they do their math in that respect and they do whatever they can to fix things. And, and of course there are times where, I mean, I, like I'm a big lover of Delta and I feel like Delta for me, for other people I know really goes out of their way to do something. And then I get, you know, a message from a guy I know who says, you might love Delta, but they just screwed me. And look, 
things are going to happen. Things are not, there are going to be things that, that they can't fix or they're not willing to fix that day. Or you get a particular person on the phone. You know, I'll, what I'll do is when I get said no to by a customer service agent, instead of arguing, I'll just call back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'll get a different one who, who might just be more apt to be willing to listen to me or to help me out. And I'll think about the fact that was I a little nasty? Was it maybe I need to be a little nicer this time, y you know, in, in the way I communicate. But, you know, there again, it, it, it's it's what simplicity is not just about price. It's about the way you deal with things, how quickly you get back to people. And simplicity doesn't mean they say yes all the time, but they make your life easier. And to me, that's just really important today. And it's part of this whole thing because everything has been commoditized. You can buy things in so many places for the same price, for the same thing. I mean, now, you know, with Amazon, I buy on, 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 custom, on, on different brands' websites and they, I pay with Amazon Pay, which means it, they already have my information. It gets delivered through the Amazon network. And again, that's th this brand is saying, and by the way, Amazon's not drawing me into their world there. I'm already in their world, but the brand is piggybacking on that relationship and making it easy, especially younger companies or even um, existing um, legacy companies that, that, that don't have a delivery process in place or, or good e-commerce experience, and they're trying to improve it with those services. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think the, these models and the, the, the Walmart model of EDLP, I, I think is um, maybe a, not well understood from an entrepreneur's viewpoint. When people hear just, you know, low, low price, they're not necessarily thinking simplicity, make it easy, you know, uh, pull things together so that the customer doesn't have to stress or look in 52 different places. You know, if you go to a website and some websites, it's very, very hard to find the information that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, prime example, uh, airport yesterday, looking for a time for the customs to, what time does it open? Right. <clears throat> We jumped through hoops for 40 minutes, ended up calling the airport, and this lovely young woman took the time to go track it down, okay? Right then and there, I mean, that doesn't normally happen when you call an airport. They're too busy to deal with you, but this young woman yesterday, I mean, she's won me over forever. But that gets over, that gets to another good point. Sometimes just pick up the phone. Like people are so afraid of using the phone that like it, it, John, my business partner and I laugh when we walk through airports sometimes we'll go, oh my God, we didn't have to, we could use the, the, the reading app. You just like, like someone will go, excuse me, where's gate 19? Um, there's a sign right up there that says gate 19. Or another thing will say, we're going to use, like, and we'll make videos about this. We're going to use the asking app. Excuse me, sir. Do you know where something is? But everybody's so busy trying to find it on the phone. I'll pick up the phone and like call somebody. And I urge people in companies. I remember when I was a collective bias, and sometimes it would be like a late on a Friday, and people would be trying to get something done before the weekend. And there'd be thirty emails going out with twenty people CC'd, and and I I pick up the phone and in three minutes solve an issue that they've been emailing back and forth about for an hour. And I'd say, guys, I know you're afraid of this tool. You know, it's scary. You know, it's not just a computer. It actually has 10 numbers, zero to nine, where if you press a certain number of them, you can actually hear somebody's voice and have an engaging conversation the way we're doing here. Oh my God. And 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 get an answer like like that you can't find when you're going and you're looking and you pick up the phone and ask somebody. I mean, you know, look, a lot of the companies are pushing us away from that because it is time sensitive, but almost every company has somebody you can talk to, whether it's a chat button on a, yeah. on a website or like, look, I call American Express. And the first thing you get on the recording is, you know, please go to the website and you can, blah, 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 and, yeah. and, but you know, I, I, I buy to sit there. I just start hitting zero yeah. you know? yeah. and they start asking, what do you get? Zero, 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 zero. And then I get a person. Yeah. And 99 out of 100 times, that person could solve my issue or answer my question in under two minutes, probably in under a minute. Yeah. I, I, I think we've, we've trained the next generations to only utilize the phone with their fingers. Well, it's I don't know if it's, if it's us training them or it's the environment. And, and by the way, I get it. And I, you know, I will try to do things there. 
But what, what people are just failing to realize is how you can stand out. Like people ask me all the time, how can I build my brand? How can I stand out? How, well, how about doing what my business partner, John, does? Every day when he's in the car, he calls people. Every single day. Like, it, it, you know, it goes back to the old joke when, when my brothers and I, when, when my parents were alive and it was before things had totally escalated to this point. But whenever we call my mom, we'd be driving somewhere and she'd go, yeah. oh, you must be in the car. Like it was, it was like the Jewish mother put down, like, oh, you must be in the car because you only call me when you're driving. And, yeah. you know, my joke would always be mom, then thank goodness for driving because I'm calling you. Like, what does it matter as long as I call you regularly? Um, but you know, there, there's like people say, well, I don't have time for that. And look, I get it. One of the reasons people don't use the, the ability to talk on the phone is you can get caught up in things. It does take a long, a, a lot longer time. And I'm not saying stop texting, stop emailing, man, I use that stuff incessantly. But when you want to just make a personal connection, when well, here's another great thing. If you pick up the phone and call 30 people today, the odds are maybe two will answer maybe yeah. now you just got the credit for calling 28 people now granted a lot of people don't check their voicemails or well, my favorite is this voicemail box is full which is intentional they do that because they don't want you leading now, by the way that's another bad relationship thing because that's your way of saying by the way don't bother me i don't want to hear your messages yeah. now Look, I get it that some of these people get a lot of, you know, sales pitches on, on there, you know, but it's as easy as saying, if you leave a sales pitch, like, hello, this is Ted, love to hear from me. If you leave a sales pitch on my voicemail, I will immediately delete it. Now, people don't listen to that, but I guarantee you a lot of the people whose mailboxes are full, because I know who they are, I know what their jobs are, I know what their personal lives are, are not getting dozens of those messages. They're just saying, I don't want to take the time to talk to you, or I don't want to take the time to have to listen to my voicemail. And by the way, that's okay. But don't in the next breath say to me, how do I build my personal brand? Or yeah. how do I get more people to, to say nice things about me? Or how do I get people to connect? I've been emailing them all day and they're not answering. Pick up the damn phone. Yeah. You know, make it a habit. Or just do something. Do something that will separate you from the crowd. So yeah. here, I'll give you another little tip. For years and years, my dad taught me this thing. He said, whenever you can get someone's birthday, write it down. Yeah. Put it in your calendar. But also make a list. Because remember, this is back, and who knows what the age range of your audience is, but um, most people here won't remember, you know, having to write dates and calendars in a book, right? Because we all have, have these devices. But back in the day, you know, you had a calendar and it lasted for a year. And what I, I mean, he dad, my dad said, don't just write it in your book because it's going to make next year really hard because you're going to have to go through day by day. Keep a list of birthdays. And I had a notebook with all the birthdays days listed in chronological order. And that week between Christmas and New Year's, when we all get off, I'd pick like one afternoon and I would go into my new date book and I'd write in all the birthdays. So they'd come up because every day I would look at my calendar. And then every time I would either pick up the phone or I would grab a card if I had if I could do it in time, um, or I'd stop by if this person had an office or a home near mine, and I'd wish them a happy birthday. And then, you know, these automatic calendars came out and people still didn't get it. People go, oh my God, you remembered my birthday. Yes. How did you remember? And I'd be looking at them like, duh, like I have a Palm Pilot. Like, don't you know what these things do? And then, you know, obviously these phones came out, but before that Facebook came up with the thing where they alert you about birthdays and it kind of ruined it for me because everybody's getting these birthday alerts and it, it didn't allow me to stand out as that one unique person or one of a group that remembered. So instead I moved to writing, instead of just writing happy birthday or checking a box, I write a quote and a personal note to everybody on their birthday. And, 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 and now what I do is if you tell me your child's birthday or your grandchild's birthday or your wife's birthday, I write that down and I put that in my, in my calendar. I mean, yesterday, a CMO of a major company who's been there forever really has become a good friend. I sent him a note the other day saying, oh my God, it's your fourth grandchild's fifth birthday. I can't believe it's been four. And he calls her, he called her when he sent out the announcement, sweet, sweet Kathleen. I wrote that in there and, and he like, you know, he's like, Oh my God, you're like, you're amazing. And it, the little things like this are so easy to do because it took me work once after when he mentioned it once. And, but this is not a lot of work. Someone mentioned it. I, I either quickly said, Oh my God, remember that, remember that. Or I just, I took out my phone and I put a little note to myself. And then after the meeting ended, I went and 
threw it into my into my phone. And what I do a lot of times is I'll if I can't write if I can't write it on something, I'll send myself a quick email because then it sits in my inbox until I open it. So even if it's two days later, I'll then put it in my file. And now I've got an emotional point of connection. So, you know, I just think that's really, and that enhanced the relationship, but then, but then enhances your possibilities of what goes on in the future. And like, there's a line I like to use that says, you know, uh, um, one person can change your life. Yeah. One meeting can change your life. One connection can change your year business-wise. Like I'll make videos with my with John and people will say, oh, you know, I was looking at that and it, it only got 241 views and, and only like 10 people liked it. I said, I only need one. I need one person to reach out and go, you know, yes. you were talking about that issue and that thing with Photify. I'd love to talk to you guys. And by the way, I get one of those kind of calls from almost every one of those things we post. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. take massive numbers in most cases to make a huge difference. Well, the, the one thing I learned early, early on is your next best customer is the one you have right now. Right. And, and that speaks to exactly what you're saying. It's not about, you know, a gigantic pool. It's about really serving well those that you're engaged with. And for me, I don't know if you get the same it excites me to make somebody happy. Oh, absolutely. Come on, so, of course. Oh, my God. Like, that's the best feeling in the world. I mean, have you ever seen the movie Dave with um, um, with Kevin Klein? And he impersonates the president because the president has a heart attack and they don't want him to know he's dead. But before that, his job was uh, he, he wasn't a recruiter. He was um, he ran one of these um, employment agencies. And he used to say, it's Monday. Everyone works on Monday. And then he'd look at someone and they'd say, why do you do this? He goes, you can't imagine the feeling it is when when you change someone's life by getting them a job. I mean, that's like one of my favorite things in the world is when people reach out and go, Hey, Ted, you know, I, I want to let you know, I just, I just got downsized or I just got let go of my job or I just left. Cause you know, I, I, I'd had enough of it. And if you hear of anything, if you know of anything, like I will spend almost half the next day searching to see if there's anything I connect that person with, not just because I, I, I want to help them, but it's because of the feeling you get when, when you do do something yeah. like that or get someone, get someone a job. And I mean, how important those things are in someone's life or get their, their, their child one. And this is one of the things that upsets me when I reach out to people and I say, Hey, listen, my friend's daughter is looking to get in this industry. Would you mind just having a conversation with her? You know, I'm not asking you to, to give her a job. I'm just, Give her a little insight, tell her what might work. And I tell people all the time, when you get these emails and these and these texts and these requests from friends, say yes. Find the time. But the worst thing you can do is say yes and then not return that kid's email. Not do it. Yeah. Return that kid's text. Right. And I say to people, by the way, one of my lines is, I really appreciate it, but don't say yes if you really don't have time and you're not going to do it. Because I'd rather that not happen. Then you build someone up. You make me look bad. You make you look bad. I can't tell how often that does happen. But they go, oh, sure, please. And then I, like a few months later, I hear from that person. Or they go, oh, no, he never got back to me. Or she never got back to me. Yeah. You know, come on, people. You know, be good to people. I totally agree with you. It happened with a, a very big CEO of a company who was all about doing things for people. And we had a mentorship program. I suggested that he have a chat with this person. And he said, oh, absolutely. Never called. Never called. You know, and it's just, again, be honest, be straightforward. It's okay to say I don't have time. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I have people all the time. I mean, I try to make time for everybody, but there are times where I say I just can't do this. Or they say, hey, I love this conversation. Would you be my mentor? And I go, I don't, I don't like, I don't do that. Like, I will. Take your call anytime. I will help you out, but I, I can't take you on as like an official mentor. Yeah. And, and and like I explain to people when people say, "Oh, everyone," I, I a lot of people mentor just that you don't necessarily have that title. You just make yeah. yourself available to people. But again, don't say yes if you're not going to do something. Yeah. If that goes towards building a relationship, that goes towards what your reputation is. Look, when somebody, every once in a while, someone will reach out to me or, or online, they'll say, oh my God, I reached out to Ted three months ago. He never got back to me. I don't reply right away. I give it a few minutes and usually at least 10 people jump in and go, oh, he must have missed it. Or maybe you didn't remind him because Ted never does that. Like I don't even have to defend myself. And truth be told, I feel worse than anybody if I don't, like I tell people all the time, if I tell you I'm gonna get back to you and you don't hear from me, ping me and remind me. 
because it means some, look, we all have a lot on our plates. A lot of things can fall through the cracks. You know, I mean, just the other day, a guy who I'm incredibly close to, the, the best personal branding photographer out there, everybody. If you need a guy, his name is John D'Amato, D-E-M-A-T-O. His company is D'Amato Productions. He is amazing, cost-effective. He gets to know the people he's working with. He, all the photos you see of me that I publish everywhere, like the one yeah. you used in the thing, he's taken all of them. Well, recently, uh, I think it was maybe Sunday, he reached out and asked me for help with some copy for something that an offer he was making. And I, I got it. And like, uh, I think a lot of people have this habit. Like I realize I better do this right now or I'm probably going to forget. So I jumped in and I read what he wrote, but I realized I didn't have time. So I wrote a quick sentence and I was writing, here's the, my first take. Um, I'll get back to you with more. And I never sent it. I got sidetracked. I never sent it. And then two days later, I saw his post on social media and I went, oh, man. And I, and I reached out to him right away and I said, oh my God, buddy, I'm so sorry. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm like, dude, you should know better. If you don't hear back from me, you know, just ping me and say, you don't have to say, hey, you didn't get back to me. You can say, hey, did you see my email? Yeah. Because a lot of us miss things or we don't miss them, but then we forget about them because I don't know about you, but I'll go back to, to a, a link that's open and I'll go, oh my God, I never sent that email. Or I never click send on that post because a phone rang or, or, or my phone pinged with a text or somebody walked in the door and it got sidetracked. And by the way, I don't know about you, but I've got probably 20 URLs opened on my desktop, you know, and so I don't immediately it, like I, I try to go and check and see did I forget something that I not do something, but they're all there because I haven't done something yet. Yeah. Whether I haven't read it, I haven't posted it, I haven't completed it. So, you know, part of that is that brand is that when you make that clear to people, people will, number one, reach back out to you without fear. Number two is they'll defend you if and when you do drop the ball, which we all do. Oh, well, yeah, because we're all human and, and it happens. Elaine, I've got to finish up here. So is there anything else that you want to cover briefly before we get done? Or The one thing I like to do, and uh, same as four years ago, I'd like you to leave our audience with, some little tip or tweak or hack that you use on a daily basis, either personal or business. Okay. Well, it, you know, there's a lot of different hacks I use and a lot of different ways, but let, let's start with one where either um, let's say you want to start a blog or you want to start producing content more actively written content, like your thought thinking. And, you know, people look at me and, and they say, Oh my God, it's easy for you. And the truth be told, it is easy for me. I mean, I have, I have a, half of those URLs opened or things that I need to post or put out there or share, but I am not at all a natural writer at all. Like I remember when Twitter came out, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can produce content in 140 characters and people pat me on the back. Instead of saying that sucked, you only wrote a sentence. You know, that was amazing. And then shortly after I started building my presence with Twitter, uh, a mentor of mine um, came to me and he said, you've got to start a blog. And I'm like, dude, what do you mean I got to start a blog? You mean I have to write those like multiple paragraphs and even one thing? He's like, listen, you don't own Twitter. You don't own Facebook. You'll own your blog. You've got to start putting some of your thinking into content there. Don't worry. You don't have to write a lot. Even if you put a tweet on it to begin with. And, you know, it took me a while to learn. But what I realized is I write very effectively when something impassions me. And very often that happens when I see a post of someone else's or a news post or, or, or it's not just people that are not all the bloggers. It can be, it can be any of the major newsletters. I read a lot of them and I go, Oh my God, I go either. I go, Oh my God, that's so on point. And I jump in to write a comment or I say, Oh my God, they're so wrong. And I jump in to write a comment. And what I learned to do is I save those comments because that's a blog post. Very, or at least it's the seed of a blog post. So what I do is I save those and I either put them in an email or I take them and I post them immediately to Facebook or LinkedIn or something, you know, as long as it makes sense. And sometimes I might post the article. And what I usually do in an email is I put in my email and I put in my drafts. I keep a cop. I keep a link to the post that I wrote it about. Which otherwise, sometimes you might lose context. I put what I wrote and then very often that comment itself becomes a blog post or a post on LinkedIn or a post on social media. I might use or not use the link from where I, where I wrote it because it, it very often it turns into a thought unto itself. 
Yes. You know, someone was writing when I first talked about let's move from the mindset of targeting to the mindset of matchmaking. That was a comment about a targeting post that I got really annoyed with. And, and I started writing like, oh, my God, we've got to start thinking about this differently. People know we're talking this way. Nobody wants to be a target. You want to make a match, not just a target, you know, and, and then I extended on it. And little by little, it's become it's gone beyond just the mindset of matchmaking versus targeting. So people don't feel targeted. It's become think about the concept, a target. You shoot, you hit. The, the engagement is over. A match is an ongoing relationship and, and implies that in people's minds. So that's a really great tip for producing content. Um, that that's uh, that's that's for me is 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 a great hack. Another thing, I'll, I'll, a tip I'll give you that isn't really a, it's a relationship hack. It's not a it actually takes more time, not less time, is never send out a LinkedIn request or a Facebook request without a note. Yes. And, and and I don't care if you have a regular note that you just customize. Like, look, I don't think I don't take shortcuts and I don't have things that I can write to add to, but then I'll personalize it. And Or sometimes I won't. Maybe I've been in an event and I met 300 people and there's no way I can write 300 individual things, but I'll have a basic thing like so great meeting you, social media marketing world, um, really enjoyed our conversation, looking forward to connecting. Um, I hope you'll be happy to do so. You know, sincerely, Ted. And then if I had a particular conversation that I remember with that person, I might say, oh, and thanks so much for the discussion about the Pittsburgh Steelers or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And then here's another. And by the way, yes, you will be told that most people don't read those communications. It doesn't matter. OK, because one person reads it, it gets the value. Plus, I guarantee you it'll be more than one. And most people will never reply to that thing, but you will start building that reputation that goes beyond your brand and, and, and links things together. So that relationship will link the brand and your reputation into one. Start thinking about that. And then here's another thing. When someone reaches out to you, never accept the LinkedIn request without a personal note back. Yes. And I have to tell you, I have received hundreds of notes saying, oh my God, you're the first person that ever replied with a note you know, thank you so much. Or, wow, you really do live your brand. You know, people tell me that you do that, but I didn't really believe it. Or all different, or people will just ignore it, but they will see it. They will see that you wrote a note. They might not pay attention to it, but in their mind, they will say, oh my God, this guy took, this person took the time to do it. Reply to every single one. I don't care if you met that person five minutes ago, had a detailed conversation right back and go, hey, John, great meeting you. Th thanks so much for reaching out here. Happy to connect. It's that simple. Feel free to be in touch at any time. And then when they are in touch, reply back. Yeah. Don't ever say reach out to me anytime and then, and then don't. Yes. <laughs> that, those, those are my most important hacks. And I'll leave your audience with, you know, you, you know, I have these one liners and you mentioned a couple of them reputation and, you know, I, two others that I think are really important is that a relation relationships are like muscle tissue. The more you engage them, the stronger or more valuable they become. Think of it that way. The same way you do more push ups, you get more of this relationships, they grow stronger. Second is that a network gives you reach, but a community gives you power. Networks connect, very important, but communities care. And what I learned over the years, I always thought of myself as a networker. Every company I worked at, I left with a at least one relationship that became a long-term, lifelong relationship. Everywhere I go, but what I learned is that all my friends got to know each other because I brought them together. And what I came to understand later is that I'm a community builder. Yeah. And you can be involved in many communities, but when you are, those people care more about you than just the relationship itself. It adds more value. So if, if, if I can just leave you with those two things and people remember them, then this will be worth the time. But of course, just, just talking to you is always worth the time. Well, thank you, Ted. I, I'm so appreciative of your time, more so of the golden nuggets you, you, you always drop. They're always super useful absolutely love the entire concept and philosophy that you have. And, and one last tip I'll give you is check out my latest venture, which is called Photify. Photify. It's up over there. It's on my hat. It's P-H-O-T-O-F-Y. It's Photify app on on in the app store it, it again it's a hack it's an ability to lay to overlay one-liners um, um all different images your branded content 
over photos and, and create content and photos and videos at scale that are brand related in a lot shorter time than most of the other apps out there. We like to call it an easy Canva. Everybody knows Canva, but like I never used Canva whenever I needed it. I used to have my assistant use it because it was just too much. Of, I, for me, it was too complicated. And I think most people are like me. If it's not easy, they stop using it. Photify is easy. Check it out or check out photify.com. And as per usual, we'll make sure that we have the Photofy link on Thank the you. page uh, with the video for your pleasure to replay whenever you need to. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today, Ted. I really appreciate it. I'm Elaine Lindsay, BBP TV show. Look forward to seeing you next time. And hey, stay curious.